Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're at Nan Chisel and the Song of the Sea. Our inspiration for this walk is taken from A Week at the Land's End by John Thomas Blight. Do you recognise this little cove? We're down at Corfguara. Where it's undoubtedly a beautiful cove. The birds are twittering around from the cliff top, you can hear them. Look at the gentle lap of the water. And the smell is so fresh. It's heavenly, very romantic. Beautiful place to be. Beach is beautiful and it seems to reflect the light as well. Everywhere you look, it's absolutely stunning. If you find yourself way down west in Cornwall, you definitely need to come here. So why are we at Port Aguara today? We intend to walk from here to Nam Chisel. It's only a couple of miles along the coast path. And what's prompted our interest in this when we visited, there was lots of dinosaur eggs, there was no sand, and we've seen photos where there's lots of golden sand down there. It'd be amusing. <laughs> it's not the relaxing beach to sit on, is it? It's exhausting. It's very pebbly, and they're big old pebbles, aren't they? Well, they're more than pebbles, they're more like boulders, aren't they? And the lady you were speaking to earlier, she said she came down here a few years ago and it was covered in sand. Yeah, yeah. Where's the sand gone, Sarah? We had a message from James Krell on our Nan Jizzle video saying that he had seen it with sand and if we wanted an interesting history to look up a name of an author called T.J. Blight from the 1800s, well this intrigued us. So we went and we found a copy of that book. Beautiful old book, I love old books. It's called A Week at the Land's End by Blight, published in 1876. He's got a beautiful illustration here. And we'll read it out to you once we get to Nan Chisel. Ooh, Come on. tantalizing. <laughs> I have my camera, let's go. Just had a thought. We ought to look at what he says about Paul Square, didn't we? Let's take a seat a minute. This book is kind of a record of the time spent by Thomas, or John Thomas Blight, he was called. And it's beautifully written, quite leaps around all over the place, talks about some fish, talks about some seaweed. I found any of him? Very, very little. So it just says, Porthguera, the higher port, picturesque fishing cove. Two tunnels are here cut through the rock to give access to the sand and seaweed on the beach. The rocks east of the archway look as if artificially built up and exhibit one of the finest veins of red granite. As at Pember, the slope to the beach is paved with large stones. On the summit of the ascent, which is very steep, is a windlass to draw up the boats. And here we have a little illustration. Isn't that exquisite? So let's go to Nan Chisel and compare his illustration with what's there today. So Sarah, yes. quick fire questions. Right. What time of year is it? September. Why is it so warm? No idea. <laughs> Where's the doggy? Too hot, he's at home. Okay, was Polduck filmed here? Yes. Have you got proof of that? Yes. <laughs> Have you got proof of that? <laughs> We've got a video. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was Ross and Demelza all geared up in their Polduck stuff, Having a photo they? shoot, weren't know, they, on I the know. beach? He's very short. <laughs> you can't say that. He is. He's like, he's that tall. I think you should go all before right. you get in trouble. I might have said this in the previous video when we were down here. I'm still amazed. How does that stay there? 
It seems to defy the law of gravity and nature. I'm sure one day that will come crashing down. Amazing. I've almost slipped over three times today. I know, you're giving me the scream nab dabs, right? They're really slippy. But they're just street shoes, darling. Yeah, but they're comfy. Yeah, so can I go on reins maybe? Can I have the car keys? Oh, yeah. That's right then. That's that sorted. You're right now. Yes. <laughs> so why do you like this place so much, Sarah? I don't know. I think it's the ruggedness. It's the beauty of it. You can't. You can't escape the fact it is a really beautiful place. The colours, the blues and the honey coloured granite, they just complement each other perfectly. And it's so dramatic, it's just beautiful. How does it make you feel? Happy! <laughs> and look, a blowhole! Hi, Sarah. So blowhole forms when a sea cave, well, it's the arch above the sea cave, gives way. And down there, right down there at the bottom, if we zoom in a bit, you can see the pebbles at sea level. That's bet they're quite big really. Don't know how deep that is. There's the rim of the blowhole and you've got this narrow little spit of land left. And on the other side there is quite a significant drop and I don't think I suffer much from vertigo but I do find it quite challenging just walking across this bit with the wind slightly blowing and buffeting you. I find I really have to take a deep breath at moments like that but it's, um, it's quite exhilarating. John Thomas Blight, the author of this book. He was born in Redruth, his father was a teacher and he had some early success with a couple of publications that like social media of his day. Then he fell in love and he couldn't marry the woman that he was desperately in love with and it sent him a bit crazy and he ended up spending the last 50, 60 years of his life in the asylum at Bodmin. So his personal story is quite tragic. His publisher at the time actually announced that he had died. Oh, that makes the story even more tragic, yeah, but really. he hadn't died. He was still in the institution. I think he was institutionalised for maybe over 50 years. Which these days just seems barbaric, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Poor man. Yeah. John Thomas Blight walked along here in the 1870s or whatever, and he drew that collapsed sea cave and called it the funnel at the time. And the other thing he drew, chair ladder. So that's going to be the next thing we look out for. So that is the lighthouse off Land's End. And I think it's near Pufflo. So we'll have a look over there. What I also love about his drawings is he puts little people in to try to give it scale. They are beautiful. Let's go find the chair. This is our plate. And we thought it might be there. But now we're thinking it might be back up there. So we're wandering back up here now. I thought trying to find the film locations was uh, hard enough, but now you're trying to find locations for a book which is like 150 years old. I know. If not more. This is quite a challenge, isn't it? So the lighthouse is in the wrong position here. So it's almost as if we need to get closer to Land's End, isn't it? Perhaps it's around the next headland because we need these jagged rocks in the water. Sarah, there's a couple of seals out there. Can you see them? Yes. So we've just scrambled down the cliff path, it's quite steep here. And we are at Porthlow and in the bay to greet us are a couple of beautiful common grey seals only one with his head up at the moment, he's glistening. 
in the middle of the bay. Where's the other one gone? We can actually see five seals just, well, they're just having a bit of fun. They look like they're cruising around, floating in the sunshine. It's adorable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two there. Two here. And three over there. Yes. Yeah, I agree with your your wildlife count there, Andrew. Do you say that my counting meets your seal of approval? Oh, yeah. <laughs> A beautiful moment with nature, eh? Beautiful, enjoyed that. Yeah. Come on, we've got a walk to do. We have dallied long enough. <laughs> and I will film you through a wall. Well, this stone wall has got more holes in it than my socks. Look at that. I love a holy wall. Where's the lighthouse then? I believe that's the lighthouse. Oh, okay. And then these are some jagged rocks in the wall, sir. Definitely drawn it as a separate like, outcrop, and there's a little platform, so he's almost down at sea level. I don't know. It's completely bemusing us, thwarting us. And the cliffs do look very beautiful and very similar. I don't know. I'm sure if you're local, you'll be telling us, oh, it's back there. It's further on wherever but um, I think it's not gonna happen today. No, that's not it either is it? Must be further on. Coming into Millpool Bay now and the song of the sea in Nan Jizzle actually beneath us. When John Thomas Blight visited, there is golden sand here today, softening the bay. So our book says we're now fairly within Mill Bay or Nan Chisel, the cove beneath the vale. This spot has somewhere been spoken of under the name of the Song of the Sea. Perhaps the waves were thought to make a singing noise. No tradition of such name is remembered in the locality. So the book goes on to say, Nan Chisel is one of the most picturesque and romantic coves on the coast. A little stream dividing the parishes of Senan and St Leven comes down the valley and dashes over the rocks very prettily. It passes through a natural archway. So here is the etching that John Thomas Blight did when he came down here 150 years ago. It's no longer here. It is interesting that he notes no one knows the Seaward Arch as the Song of the Sea. These days it's a favourite snap for social media.
evidence at all of that old arch, is there? All gone. So we're going to now pack everything away. It's coastal erosion for you. Coastal erosion. <laughs> if I stand here for 80 years, I will be eroded. <laughs> we're going to make our way back now to Porthgora. just musing like we do. We do like to muse don't we? We've got a subscriber in Norway called Torren. Hello Torren. We've met Torren. Hi Torren. And we were just musing, well when you're walking the southwest coast path, because that's her goal, to walk all of Cornwall's southwest coast path, do you skip bits? Do you come inland a bit? Because at the moment we're going inland <laughs> to get back as quick as possible. Or do you stick to the coast? Well in fairness we stuck to the coast all the way out on our walk and we're yeah. now just trying to get back to the car aren't we so we just come inland a little bit more so I know what I would do what's that well, well most of Cornwall I would certainly stick to the coast path yeah but if it was an area I've already walked before and I was feeling hungry and I wanted my pasty then I would take a detour <laughs> on the more inland route the most direct route for Andrew's pasty yes pasty views pasty views pasty Inland. Pasty winds. Okay. What do you think, Torren? Leave it in the comments, let us know. Oh, I can eat a pasty now. Well, we'll get you a pasty. We're going to get pasty at Puthgora. Good. Pasty. Look at that bad boy. Looks right now. That actually looks very, very good. You're in heaven now, aren't you? Oh. Nice walk, lovely view, and a pasty. Nice. If you do go out and about when you're exploring down here in the summer, leave no trace. No, you're not allowed to take them out the window. You naughty man, were they that good? That's them, very nice indeed. <laughs> you won't move? Yeah. I won't move either. We can't move because we've got the song of the sea between us. <laughs> so we, just, we took an old book inspired by a comment from a, a viewer and we investigated what used to be here at Nan Chisel and I hope you've enjoyed our two, two mile something like that, stretch of the coast path. This is probably one of the nicest stretch of the Cornish coastline you're going to find. Absolutely beautiful down here. So from us for now, bye. bye! To help us grow our channel please subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon.